Welcome to Heirloom Ornaments. I'm Stacy, and this week's video we will be using scrap yarn. I'm going to show you how to use up all your little balls of scrap yarns from all your leftover projects. I know we all have them. If you're a crocheter, you probably have more than this. Um, this is probably my favorite way to use scrap yarn because you can really use any color combination. It doesn't have to be Christmas. It could be your favorite spring colors or another holiday. I know holiday trees are big. Um, it could be to a theme if you're doing a theme tree. Very easy, inexpensive way to theme decorate. And you can use any color combination you want. Here I was trying to get cute, make it look a little bit like a poinsettia, but we're not really sure on that. And all you need to do this is one, of course, some scrap yarn, an ornament of any size, a darning needle, and a size G hook. This is a 4.25 millimeter uh, G hook. Now, I say any size ornament, I'm using a four inch clear bulbs. I buy these by the case at Amazon. I use these all the time for a lot of other projects. So I buy them that way because it's just more convenient, but you can use any size ornament. And I'm gonna show you as we go along how to adjust to the size you want. So let's get started. So this ornament is made by making two halves and then stitching them together. And I'm gonna go round for round with you every stitch so you'll know exactly where to go. Um, but because we're doing one half, the two halves, I'm sorry, and stitch them together, that's how we're gonna be able to adjust to whatever size we want. Uh, whether you're using an old ornament or repurpose an ornament or you just don't like the ornament you have, this is a good way to do this. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you my favorite way to package these up. It's really cute little packaging. So to start, we're gonna do a slip knot on our hook and we're gonna chain up five. One, two, three, four, five. And we're gonna join that together with a slip stitch, which is just sticking your um, hook into the first stitch and pulling through, slip stitch. Now we're gonna chain up three, one, two, three. That's gonna count as our first double crochet. Now we wanna do 11 more in the circle that we created, right into the circle, That'll give us 12 crochets all together. Sorry, 12 double crochets all together. So here's our one, yarn over, go into the circle, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That's your double crochet. So we now have two, this is three, yarn over, into the circle, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, yarn over, that's three. four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. Now before I finish off, I wanna make sure I have 12. It's easy to lose count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And to finish, I'm gonna go slip stitch into the top of the first row. See that, the top one? Yarn over, pull through. Again, just slip stitch in. And that's it. We're gonna stitch up one to get rid of it. Cut it off. And now we have our first one. Now I'm gonna make another one and then I'll meet back up with you. Exact same thing we're gonna do. Okay, now that you have two, we did one together, one you did on your own. Again, we're doing them at the same time, so as it gets bigger around there, you'll see. You take your next color, and of course, slip stitch onto your hook. And now we're gonna increase this. Um, so you have 12 here, we're gonna put a double, two double crochet in every stitch, so in the end, it'll give us 24. So I'm gonna start any one, doesn't matter where you start, you're gonna go into that first stitch, 
and slip stitch onto the your uh, to the wheel. And we're going to chain up three, one, two, three. Like I said, in crochet, that's always a double crochet. And in the same exact spot, we're going to do another double crochet. So yarn over into the stitch, yarn over, pull through, three on the hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And we're going to do two double crochet in every stitch around. So now we have two. We're going to do one. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through to yarn over, insert into the same stitch, pull yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Two double crochet in that one, two in this one. You see where we're going, just gonna do the same thing all the way around. One, two, I like this pink and orange together. One, two, one, two, one, two. One, two. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two. Whoops. This is where we end off before, so we've got to find out what we went or not. One, two, one, two. We should have 24, so we have two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, four, six, eight, ten, two, four. So 24. And we're going to go to the top of that first stitch. Put your hook in there, and we're just going to slip stitch it shut. Yarn over just to fasten it off. And you have your one side. Now you're going to do the other side, and I'm going to meet back up here with you. Okay, now that you made your second half, we're going to go back to the first one, and we're going to do round three. Slip, uh, slip knot back onto your hook. And we're gonna go in between the two. So we have two in each stitch. So in between these two is where we're gonna start working right now. What we're gonna do is we're going to, instead of going into a stitch, we're gonna go into that space and we're just gonna slip stitch it onto the, onto the pattern. And we're gonna chain up three, one, two, three. Counts as a double crochet, and then we're going to double crochet back into the same stitch. Yarn, you know, uh, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then chain one. And that's our pattern all the way around. Two double crochet, chain one. But we're going to do it in between the two stitches. So skip these two on the bottom. We're not going in the stitches, we're going in the space. Yarn over, go into the space, yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Another one, another double crochet in the same spot. Pull over, and then chain one. That's our pattern. Two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet, chain one. Now back over here, skipping the two stitches, we're going right in the space. We're gonna go one, two, whoops and chain one into the space, yarn over, one, two, oh, my yarn's moving around on me, and then back over to here. Sometimes these get in your way. You can cut them if you want. Um, they're gonna be hidden in this side. 
yarn over into the space. And we're increasing just by one now. If you noticed before we did double, now it's we're doing three for every stitch. Yarn over back into the space. Chain one. Yarn over into the space between the two. Yarn over. So we got two doubles and a chain. Into here, the space between the two. One. Two and a chain one. Two and then a chain. Let's get the two, go into the space. One, two, chain into the space. One. Two and a chain. Good. One, two and a chain. Got to trap that under there. One, two, and then a chain. And now you see you have all those two chain one, two chain one all the way around. And then we're gonna slip stitch back into the top of that one and we're gonna fasten off. Now, if you wanted to, if you wanted to make it one solid color, you could keep going all around the same color over and over again, never chain it off. But I like obviously to make them different colors. So now you could do the other one and I'll meet right back up. Now we're back for round four. I'm gonna go back to my orange. Again, you can make these any color, pa color pattern that you want. Um, or all the same color. For this next round, you'll pick any spot, obviously uh, get your yarn on the hook. You go to any of the two stitches, the first one, we're gonna start in there. So if this is your two stitches in your, your chain one, the top of the first post, we're gonna slip stitch onto there. Get my hands together, all right. And now just yarn up one, and then in that spot, I'm gonna do a single crochet. A single crochet is just insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through the two. Get my yarns all situated. And the next one, we're gonna do a single crochet. So we now just did two single crochets. Now when we come to this chain one space, we're gonna do what's called a spike stitch. It's gonna be a double crochet into the row two uh, space between those two. So we're going to yarn over and in between these two, the two on the bottom there in row two, we're going to go in the space, yarn over, pull through. You got to give yourself some slack. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Do that again. Into the first one, we're going to just do a single crochet. Whoops, get a little stuck there. The second one, a single crochet. And then we're gonna do the spike stitch. In that space, we're gonna go down to the row two, yarn over in between the two, not going in any stitches. Yarn over, pull through, pull it up, give yourself some slack, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And that's our pattern. Single, single spike, so single, single, and now we're going down to the spike. Yarn over, down between those two on row two. Yarn over, pull through, pull it up a little. Yarn over and yarn over. I'm gonna go single, single, spike all the way down there. Pull it all the way back up. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So it's single, single, and then our double spike. Yarn over, all the way down in there, yarn, pull through, pull it up a little, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And that's single, single, and then spike. 
okay? Single, I'm gonna grab some of that back one too. What I mean by that is the stragglers, just trying to keep them a little loose and, uh, I'm sorry, a little tied up and then I'll cut them all. Again, gonna single into here, single, and then yarn over for the spike. One, pull through one. Single, single, spike. And go single. Single. And then the spike. Single. Let me mess that up, Mr. Ever. Single, single, and then spike. Single, the top. Ooh. Single, and then a spike all the way down there. Pull it up. Yeah, good. Two. A little split there. Yarn over. The one thing about using scrap yarn is sometimes it gets a little splitty because it's been sitting around. So single. I don't know if splitty is a word, but that's what I'm calling it. And then spike. And now you're back where you started. So you're just going to slip stitch into the top of that first one there. And whoops, both peak, both things. Slip stitch, and then you're gonna fasten off. And that is it for round four. So that's called a spike stitch. And now you're gonna do the other side, and then we're gonna come back together. Okay, now that you've completed it round four, we both have our two sides. And as you can see, they're starting to come together a little bit. We're a little bit off, not much though, but that's how I'm was saying you're going to determine how many more rounds you go so that way you can use any size ornament that you want. So let's do round five which is uh, our slip knot onto our hook and in any one of these uh, stitches we're just going to start go in and slip stitch our yarn onto that that piece. Okay any one doesn't matter because now we're going to chain up three and as you know, that counts as a double crochet. And we're just gonna one double crochet in every stitch around. You should have 36 stitches. Um, we're not increasing anymore. So that's why it's one for one all the way around. Uh, we don't need to make it any wider circle. We're now just going to make it uh, start to curve. So yarn over, in, uh, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through one, two, yarn over, pull through two. We now have two cro double crochets. Again, we're just going to double crochet in every stitch around. And that's that's all it is for row five. And you can either pause or go along with me. I'm going to do the whole stitch with you just because I said I would. And if you find this pattern um, helpful or any of my videos helpful, please subscribe and hit the like button. It really does help. It lets YouTube know that you like these kind of videos. Who doesn't like crochet videos? They're probably my favorite ones. Okay, and see how it's starting to curl already? Well, we're gonna curl it that way. But because we're not increasing anymore, it's gonna start, cur it's gonna curve uh, instead of get wider. And I will link this yarn and this yarn, I know what these two are. This is pumpkin and this is spring green. And the only reason I know that is because I use this green a lot for a lot of different uh, projects. Uh, it, it just seems so nice. Like you can use this for Halloween, Christmas, or Easter. It's that kind of green. Fun fact is this pink that we're using is left over from when I made my brand new granddaughter flamingo baby booties. My daughter-in-law is obsessed with pink flamingos and that's what her baby shower was so she got pink flamingo booties from her new grandma i think they call me Gigi. 
Not I think, I know they call me Gigi. <laughs> And again, we're just going one double crochet in each stitch around, all the way around the same thing. There we go. Again, starting to curve, which is what we want it to do. Each stitch. And we're coming up on thirty four, thirty five, and then thirty six. And we're going to slip stitch to the top, just like we've done all the other ones. I actually like to go in this one because I like it to fold over close. Slip stitch. And there they are nice and close. Fasten off. Okay. Starting to curve a little. Now you do the next one, but don't fasten off. I want to meet you back up when you're done the second one. Because now that you've crocheted your 36 double crochets around on your second side, you're going to slip stitch to the top and pull through, but don't fasten off yet. What I want you to do is hold that together. Take your ornament and see how far along you are. Take your two sides. Again, this is why we did one half at a time together. You think there's a big gap here, but there really isn't. If these two can meet, you're good. Um, when you put, go to sew them, you'll stretch them out more. See how stretchy the yarn is? And they will come together. However, I think this could use another one. So what I'm going to do is... Now you can determine, do you want to do another row of green or do you want to add some more pink? I'm going to fasten this off and I'm going to put that pink because I like that pink because it reminds me of my Mia. Uh, and also I just think it'll be cute. Now I'm just going to put this in here so I can weave it in just a little bit. Now because I want to do another row and the gap was not that large, what I want to do is put my uh, yarn on my hook your slip knot start anywhere on here just like the previous row anywhere you want to start and we're going to put it uh, slip stitch it on but what I'm going to do now is because I don't have such a large gap I'm going to single crochet all the way around as opposed to double because I don't want it to get too high up because then it's going to be too big and baggy and I, I want it to have some give so it gives so it will stretch a little um I'm going to do a single, so I slip stitched on there. That's all I did. Now I'm going to go uh, stitch one up and then single crochet. I'm going to single crochet in every stitch around. Okay. So it'll be another 36, stitch, 36 stitches all the way around. And, um, you don't need, oh, there we go, we're a little stuck. And we don't need to do this one together, so let me just see here. I'll meet you back up at the other end. Um, this is just a single crochet all the way around. Okay, okay, now I did my single crochet around the first one, trash, uh, and then the second one. And before I fasten off, I wanna pull it up a little bit and again, double check, make sure I got enough to keep me going. Oh, this is plenty, I could tell already. Um, again, they don't look like they're coming quite together, but they really will once we start sewing. So now, again, before we fasten off, what I wanna do is leave a lot, a whole lot, like maybe two feet, maybe three feet. Yeah, let's do a lot. Um, because we're gonna sew this together now. So I left a big gap when I did my little chain one up, when I fastened off. So now I have this great big tail, huge tail. And that's how I'm gonna sew them together. Get that out of my way. And that's where we're gonna get our darning needle. And on our end, we're gonna put the thread, uh, the yarn onto our darning needle. And we're gonna get our other one and we're good. You can probably put a little bit of this, trim up some of these insides too. If the insides isn't so bad, nobody's gonna see it. But if they're really long, you might wanna trim them up a little bit. I'm going to start sewing these together 
before I put them on the ornament, but I'm going to quickly put them on the ornament. I feel like it's a lot easier to see. So I put, I uh, have my slip stitch, really long tail. If you forgot and you cut a short tail, no big deal. Just sew on it, tie it on there. That's all you need to do. We're going to match up the stitches. So from this one, we're going to go over to here and we're just going to whip stitch. That's it, into that stitch and then into the next one. And again, I'm only gonna do a couple off the ornament. I do find it a lot easier to do it on the ornament. Another one here, let's just get a couple, get us started. Another one here. So now you can see why we did the two separate at a, each side at the same time, because then once you can get a better feel for how much more you need. Uh, if you felt like you needed more, you could have done another one, but I feel like we have plenty here. So now that it's start just a couple stitches, see how I think when I do it on the ornament, it spreads it out for me to see a lot better. So now I just did that one. I'm going to go in here and in then this one and just whip it around. Just a regular basic whip stitch. The next one into that one. And pull tight, pull tight. It will stretch it across. Don't worry, it's not going to rip. And as you get around, it'll get, uh, it'll uh, stretch a little bit more. But you want to start pulling tight now because if you wait till the end, you're only going to pull the end tight and it'll look lopsided. And you try to go stitch for stitch. If you messed up, because sometimes we do that crocheting, don't worry about it in the end if it's not stitch for stitch because this is going to actually take up a couple so you'll never even notice it. This is a very easy project, I think. And this is a great one for beginners because you don't really need to learn how to sew in ends and it's a good opportunity to learn how to change colors. Um, you can do change colors without cast uh, um, finishing off. I thought that was a bit much to start right now, so we'll just start with this. Getting our stitch all the way around, pull tight. It's also, like I said, a great way to use up scrap yarn. When I, I do scrap yarn projects, I like to think about what I use the original yarn for. Like, for example, using Mia's flamingo booties. But over here I have white and red from Aunt Colleen's peppermint blanket. And then I also have a couple Halloween ones here. So I love using scrap yarn. I hate to waste. As you can see, I save it all. I even probably have more balls than that somewhere. Sometimes I throw them back in the bag that I use. I'm sure you all have project bags, tons of them. And we're just gonna keep whip stitching all the way around. Okay, as you can see, we're getting closer. I left a lot more than I needed to. So I guess I should have measured first. I think it's about two feet we leave. You don't need much more than that. Pull in tight. Pulling tight. You can see how nice it's coming together. When you pull it tight, it stretches it back out. Still have a gap. I like this really close. I like to really close up that gap. Another one here. Nice and tight. And then I'll weave it across here. the other side just making sure it's all together I'm like doing a little stitch over here close up this little bit of a gap and then you're just gonna tie it off just like when you're sewing you just make a lot knot and loop it in there just like you would if you were sewing and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back around one more time to the other side but I'm going to weave in and out as I'm going. See how I'm just weaving in? Just because I really want to loose tie up this loose um, thread. I don't want it to come out. It's not like it's a sweater or a blanket that people will be moving. So you don't have to worry too much. It will kind of, it's just going to hang on a, on a ornament or an ornament hook or on a tree. And you cut off. And that's it. You're done. Sometimes I like to add a little bit of charms. Um, sometimes I just put it in a nice bow. And I'm going to show you now. Well, how I like to package these for gift giving. So like I said, I want to show you my favorite way to package these four inch large ornaments. These are six inch bakery clear boxes. I love these. I use these for a lot of things. 
You can use them for the ornaments. I use them for baby booties. They even hold a Bath and Body Works candle perfectly. And if you have a die cutting machine, like a Cricut or a Silhouette, you can make fun customized decals for it. And if you don't have a Cricut or a die cutting machine of any sort, you can even just buy like dollar store stickers or your own stickers from wherever. And you can really have a lot of fun with these. They come flat like this. You peel off the film, you crease it up. They even come with the handles. Everything comes together. I'll link these in the description because this is a specific size. I use the six by six clear. Um, you can get other sizes, but these hold these four inch ones great. And they can also use them for cookies at Christmas time or whatever.